Hello students. Today we are going to be talking about the importance of using aseptic technique because of the fact that microorganisms are ubiquitous, which means that we find them just about everywhere. And we can test the ubiquity of organisms using a couple of different experiments. So one, we're going to ask the question, are microbes present in the air? And um, you may think that the air that you're breathing is pretty clean. Um, because you can't see what's in it, but you can imagine that the air is littered with microbes such as fun fungi, fungal spores, bacteria, viruses, um, and lots of dirt and dust. And even parts, um, uh, insect parts, uh, skin, pieces of skin floating in the air. So the air does have um, a lot of stuff floating around in it, and we can actually capture that using nutrient auger plates. So this, for example, is a nutrient auger plate, and uh, it is designed to grow um, many different types of microbes, so it's a general growth medium, and what we're going to do is we're going to open one of those and expose it just to the lab air in this lab, and then we're going to open one and expose it to the hallway air. Now you always want to label uh, plates on the bottom, on the base. So notice this one has, if I actually look at it sideways, the base is the smaller part, the lid is the, the larger part, and the lid fits snugly on the base. So you never want to um, write on the lid and label the lid because lids can come off and there's no media in them. So if it should actually come off um, accidentally, uh, you won't know what's on your actual medium. Okay, so you label the side that actually has the medium in it, the base. So this is NA for nutrient auger, but you also want to write there where you're going to be um, exposing it to, and you probably want to write your initials and the date uh, so that you know how long it's been incubating and that it belongs to you, especially in a laboratory where there may be lots of people working. So. Uh, I'm going to take one of these, expose it to the air, and one in the hallway. We'll leave it there for, you can leave it there anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. It's up to you. Um, and then when you're done, you want to go ahead and cover it back up. Okay, and then incubate it upside down. Uh, and that will prevent any condensation from growing on your media. You can actually see the condensation will go on the lid. Okay, because we don't want our bacteria swimming around in that liquid there. Okay, so we're going to leave that one open for now. Um, and so when we come back uh, after incubating this, and you can incubate this at room temperature for like a week, or you can put it in a 37 degree incubator, and then it should only take a day or two for colonies to form. And we'll see what grows on there. And most likely what you're going to get is you're going to get these... Um, growths of puffy cotton candy looking stuff. If you get that, that's uh, most likely fun uh, fungus, okay, fungal growth from fungal spores in the air. Um, and if you get some solid colonies, those are most likely bacteria. And usually they're really pretty. They have different colors, uh, pink, yellow. Some are um, clear colored um, and uh, which have no color. And others may look frosty, like translucent or off-white. And that's just showing you the various different types of microbes that are actually in the air that we inhale every day that go into our respiratory system. Now, luckily, most of us have very strong immune systems, so these bacteria do not harm us. Um, and um, that's why uh, we are able to um, inhale and breathe the air, even though uh, it may be full of fungal spores and some bacteria, some viruses, um, etc. Now... Um, if we're working in a laboratory and we need to keep things sterile, opening your plates to the air, this data will show you that opening your plates to the air can cause them to become contaminated. So this is one of the things that we want to keep in, um, in our minds and consider in the future when working with medium is that we do have bacteria in the air. So when we're practicing aseptic technique, we always want to keep our cultures covered unless we're working in an area like next to your flame where you have a semi-sterile area. Okay, so try to keep your plates covered at all times, try to keep your tubes covered at all times, and this experiment will show us that. All right, so when, when, you're, um, when you're done with this and you come back, what you want to do is photograph your data and you want to put that in your lab notebook and also 
um, look at look and record look at the place and record the different types of colonies and describe the different colony morphologies. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hunt for some bacteria on surfaces, and we're asking the question: Are microbes present on surfaces? And you can choose any surface: the bottom of your shoe, your palm, under the nail. Um, you can do your belly button and compare belly button um, microbes, which is kind of gross, but our skin also has microbes growing on it. Um, you uh, can do, for example here, your keyboard, your computer keyboard, which is pretty nasty actually, and you can also compare that with your phone, and that's what I'm going to do today. And to get the bacteria, what I'm going to use um, is I'm going to use um, sterile swabs, and the way you open a sterile swab is you look for the end that has the stick, not the end that has the um, cotton on it. And you want to open this end, the end that has the stick. So you want to go like this, open it up. Okay. Now we want to try to keep this as, as sterile as possible. So I'm just going to open it a little bit like that. And this comes with two in it. So I'm going to save one for the, for the, um, one for the keyboard, one for the phone. Okay. And what I can do is I can take my plate and I can draw with a sharpie a line down the middle there. And let me do that. So I'm going to draw a line down the middle. Oops. Let me draw a line there. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line down the middle like so. And I'm going to label it. One side's going to say keyboard and one's going to say phone. You also want to put the date on there as well as your initials. Okay, and always label the bottom part, not the top part. So once you have labeled your plate, you can go ahead and take out the sterile swab. Now, try not to touch the sides here when you take it out because we don't want to contaminate the swab tip. It is sterile. So as I take it out, I'm just careful not to touch any sides there. Okay, now. Um, I want to quickly get my sample. Now I'm recording this on my computer, so I'm going to swab my keyboard right here. And as I'm swabbing, I'm actually twirling the swab to completely coat all sides. Okay, and I am almost certain that we're going to get lots of microbes growing here because I can't remember the last time I disinfected this keyboard. Uh, which is kind of gross, but it is what it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pick up my plate and again you would want to open this plate um, next to a flame to ensure that it's not contaminated by the air okay but I'm just gonna do it here so you can see so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back and forth on the side that says keyboard and as I'm doing that I'm gonna twirl so I get all the bacteria from all sides onto the plate so I'm gonna go like this and then I'm gonna twirl it go back twirl it I turn the plate a little bit and go back. Now stay on stay on the correct side so that you're not um, invading the other side that we're going to use for the phone. So that now is is done for that side. Okay. Now this was just for my keyboard, so this can go in the trash. Okay. Then I take the other one out again. Careful not to touch the sides. And I'm going to swab my phone. Where is my phone? Here's my phone. Okay, so phones tend to collect a lot of gunk. Okay, and you can get the back of your phone. Okay, you can get the sides and the front. Okay, so you just get the different parts, twirl it as you're going. Okay, and you're sure to pick up a lot of gunk there. A lot of microbes on phones. Okay, and then the side that says phone. That's the side I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back and forth and also twirl it as I'm going. Okay, twirl it, go that way, and then twirl it, and then go this way. Now don't press too hard and stay on your side. Okay. If you press too hard, you will stab the media, and that will cause the media to curl in the incubator um, as the media dries, and it can ruin your whole uh, medium. So try not to stab or break the medium. Then that's done. That's inoculated. You're going to put it upside down again to avoid condensation on the medium and you can leave that at room temperature for about a week or you can put it in a 37 degree incubator for about a day or two and you should get some colonies there um, 
And what you want to do, again, is look at the different colony morphologies. You can even count the colonies. Um, if you end up getting fuzzy mold in there, you can try to describe what it looks like, whether it's black, white, if it's green, um, because mold can give you different colors, um, which is characteristic of that particular species of mold. And uh, you will see that microbes are present on a lot of surfaces. Um, so again, photograph that data, put it into a lab notebook, um, uh, analyze it um, by um, uh, seeing if there's uh, trends in your data, and you can even compare what you're seeing here with what you're seeing um, in this experiment here to compare your surfaces versus your lab air, um, and then write a brief conclusion regarding uh, the presence of microbes on surfaces and air. Now, what you will find is that you will find lots of microbes on surfaces and in air. And so that brings us to why aseptic technique is so important. Now, aseptic, aseptic technique are a bunch of techniques that we use in the microbiology laboratory to prevent contamination of ourselves as well as our media and others. Um, so one thing when you're working with media is always work next to a Bunsen burner or some sort of flame. And the reason we do that is because for about this far, about this radius here, around your flame, you're going to have air circulating in convective currents, and the air will be sucked in through the bottom and superheated and shoot out the top and move in this pattern here in all directions, creating what I like to call an, uh, a semi-sterile area. It's not completely free of microbes, but it's... it's um, pretty good area to work in so that you're not contaminating um, your media with air that has microbes in it. Um, and so always work next to your flame and you want to flame your inoculation loop um, if you're using any inoculation loop uh, to incinerate any microbes that may be on it before putting it into your media or inoculating any media. Keep your cultures covered, so cover your tubes, cover your plates, don't leave them open. Um, and if you do need to open them, only open them next to the flame. And one way I like to open the plates is using the clamshell technique. Clams have, uh, they're bivalves, right? So they open like this, okay? So imagine your plate is a clam and we're going to open it to the air. So what you would do is be next to your flame, okay? And then you just clamshell it. So you open it like a clam and then close it. So whatever you need to do, whether you're observing it visually or you want to inoculate this plate, just open it enough to do your inoculation and then close it. And that way you don't have to take off the lid and put it somewhere. It stays with the plate and then you're closing it right away. Any cultures that you work with, like ones that come in tubes, always hold it next to your flame. Uh, if you're going to open those tubes and close them before you come away. Okay, also use a test tube rack. So oftentimes we end up having many, many, many tubes and you must be organized. Label all of your tubes, okay? And uh, you want to ensure that when you're labeling your tubes um, that you label again, label the top here, okay? Don't label the caps. And uh, we use the test tube rack to keep our tubes organized but also to prevent our tubes from tipping over because once they tip over, if some broth goes up here, it'll actually pull some contaminants down into the medium, and uh, that's one great way to get contamination. So avoid putting your tubes on their sides or shaking your tubes, unless a particular protocol or procedure requires you to do that. You also want to practice universal safety precautions, and that those are things like not touching your face, don't put anything in your mouth, don't apply makeup, or chapstick in the laboratory, you must wash your hands before you leave the lab, even if you're using gloves. Um, really watch where your hands are. If you're touching your phone or anything, you want to disinfect your phone with some 70% uh, alcohol before you leave or some sort of disinfectant. Um, uh, there should be no food or water or drinks in a laboratory. Uh, that must be consumed in the hallway or outside of anywhere outside of the lab. There's no mouth pipe heading, so you should never put anything in your mouth. Um, and those are some of the universal safety precautions that we need to practice in order to prevent um, 
not contaminating, uh, to prevent contaminating ourselves or even contaminating others. Remember that your gloves um, have a lifespan, so eventually liquids do move through this barrier, and so you want to change your gloves out when you're done. Don't wash your hands and then save your gloves. You can't do that. Um, that uh, will not clean the gloves. And the way you want to take off your gloves is to take your hands, pinch it here, and you're going to fold it so that the gloves fold outward like that. Okay, then you want to bunch that up into your other hand and then take your finger, go inside, and form a little pouch. Okay, and now all of the contamination is on the inside and not the outside. And then that you can put in the biohazardous waste container if it's really contaminated with microbes. And if it's not, uh, if you think it's pretty fine, you can just throw it in the regular trash. If you were working in a clinic, this would need to go into some sort of biohazardous waste, especially if there's blood, tissue, or urine, or something like that on it. Okay. Um, so that pretty much wraps up our uh, ubiquity of microorganisms and the importance of aseptic technique.